Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die, where my goal is to give you evidence that although our bodies will disappear, we survive physical death. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Before we start the show, I have a question for you. Where can you find a Brazilian scientist who spent over 30 years recording audios and now pictures of people living in the afterlife? A psychic attorney, a physical and trance medium, demonstrations by many mediums, including one who not only can see your loved ones, but can draw a picture of them. A near-death experiencer who now teaches people shared crossings. A millennial grief recovery coach and radio host. An expert on recording electronic voice phenomena. And me, I know that's a big question, but the answer is We Don't Die Orlando. It will be a life-changing, transformational event that I I'm putting on along with We Don't Die Radio that will be held the end of March 2019 at a resort very close to Walt Disney World. You can find out more at WeDon'tDieOrlando.com, but I would love to have you there. So on to the show. Today, we will be talking with Austin Wells, who is a spiritual medium, grief counselor, and soul gardener who empowers individuals to create soul-centered lives. Austin hosted her own show on psychic medium John Edwards' spiritual website, Infinite Quest. An author, lecturer, guest medium, and teacher, Austin developed the Divine Spark Cards, which assist both developing mediums as well as grief counselors to inspire healing conversations with their clients. Her Divine Insight cards create simple, intuitive bridges to assist anyone who wishes to listen to the wisdom of their soul. Austin is featured in Matt McKay's book, Seeking Jordan, and also in Trust Within, The Heart of Intuition by Molly Carroll. Austin Wells' first book just got released a few days ago, which is kind of why she's on the show today, because we are celebrating. Her book is called Soul Conversations. A medium reveals how to cultivate your intuition, heal your heart, and connect with the divine. Her website is austinwells.com, and you can find out so much more about her, about the books, her services, her cards, where she'll be speaking next, and even check out one of her many online classes. Austin Wells, my new friend, a warm welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Why, thank you, Sandra. I am so excited about your conference. It sounds amazing. I will be. I'm so, me too. It's the first that I'm doing, putting on conferences, but I'm so excited. Um I- Sounds, it sounds, I mean, I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) And I had said to you just before we started recording that after just a few minutes talking to you, I think we'll be working together too. I think spirit works in wonderful ways. And I just feel like you're a soul sister. Well, I, I, okay. I'm adopting you. (laughs) Okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And for our listener, you're like, get on with the mushy, after the mushy stuff. Let's talk to this lady. So first of all, congratulations on your book. That's a big, big, big deal. Anybody who's written a book knows how much work it takes. And, well, uh, and I, I think you would absolutely understand the process of it and congratulations on your own book. But yes, yes. it's it's uh, probably the closest to giving birth to something I will understand. Yeah, it's a really big deal. And you'll never see or know the amount of lives that you touch. So mm. you just kind of put it out into, you know, it's hard copies, of course, but then also the Kindle copies and soon to be audio book, I'm sure. And you just never know how you can change a life with your words. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's the hope of it. Um, I had been so moved by different books along the way. And I wanted to create a compendium and a journey that took someone into the invisible path of the soul. So with my different disciplines, it just um, got to the point where I had to like put pen to paper and make it happen. That's great. And so let's find out about you. So um, how does the story begin of you? First of all, you live on the West Coast. You're, you said you're in the Los Angeles area. Mm-hmm. Just said I'm sitting at my home and just north of Boston in Massachusetts. Um, yeah, have you always been interested in this topic? Did you grow up being psychic? Maybe you can give us a little bit of your story. Absolutely. 
it it all started. <laughs> I feel like we're cozying up next to a fireplace. Um, I like it. It uh, it all started when I was five. I was in a fashion show as a bridesmaid with a tr- with a dress with a boatload of tulle, and um, I was very worried I was going to face plant going up the stairs or down the runway or anything along that line. So. I decided in the middle of the night to pray very hard. And all of a sudden the walls of my room started morphing and all of these people, spirit people came into my room. I didn't recognize them, but I wasn't afraid at all. And this one very lovely, gentle, amazing woman came to my side and spoke soul to soul to me. So it wasn't a verbal sound. It was a spiritual communication. And she asked how they could help. And I just released my feeling to her. And then my bedroom became two locations. So next to me was the runway of the next day. And she gifted me with the ability to view the future and to witness what was going to transpire. So I was able to see that I didn't face plant going up the stairs. And then once I had the confidence of walking down the runway, then she had me look in the audience and immediately I became them watching me. So then I could feel the love and support that I was receiving that I could not sense on my own. And then she had me sense the entire room and how angelically held it was. And then at that moment I knew there was no way I could fail. So then that vision dissipated. I was back in my room with this woman and a lot of the people had left at that point. And she checked in with me to make sure I was fine. And I was, and then she dissipated and I fell asleep. How clear is that memory to you? Beyond clear, almost clear. Like when you have an out of body experience, when you have a lucid dream, um, when you have a spirit visitation, I mean, it's so clear that I can go back without any doubt of a moment of it. And it feels like what you always know is soul time. It took much longer than I'm sure it actually did to transpire. I just asked that question. First of all, thank you for sharing that because it's an amazing story. Like unlike anything I've ever heard before, but Mm. I know people that have had near death experiences that even if they had them in childhood, whenever it was, they remember it like it was just yesterday. They're the the most clear memories they have. And it just tells me that somehow when you have a real connection with the divine um i mean it becomes so true to the core that you don't forget and that it is that clear i just find that fascinating the amount of clarity that you can still have so that tells me there's something special to them (laughs) it's similar when a person does uh because i studied hypnosis and hypnotherapy so i'm a hypnotherapist and uh i studied past life regression initially and then when i studied shamanism we also did soul regression which all work with different levels of consciousness and the accessibility that way even when people do past life regressions uh when they go into that level of their consciousness there is an absolute loss of time and a beyond and the amount of clarity is extraordinary. So when you're working on the level of the soul, the experiences are so profound mm-hmm. and captured quite succinctly. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. So then growing up and then going through high school and all that and getting into the real world, did you go into mediumship or did you start out um I don't want to say with a regular job, but you know what I'm asking. <laughs> Did you continue a spiritual search or? Yeah. I I you was talk. always, I was always doing spiritual work, but somewhat in the background. Okay. Um, and I, my first boyfriend's mom was very spiritual. Thank goodness. So she introduced me to tarot cards, oh. which were a beginning of a, bridge into the archetypes that exist within our souls. So then I had a, um, a wonderful party planner who somewhat cattle prodded me into uh, reading at parties mm-hmm. b- way before I felt it was, I was ready. 
And then I started doing that work and intuitive work on top of that. And then the mediumship began really coming into play as I started working. But the um, when the mediumship really kicked in um, to the point where I couldn't deny it anymore was when I was hired by Toyota to be the voice of an intuitive car. It's one of the best marketing ideas I've ever heard of, but they took a car. It was the Yaris at Uh that point, and they put cameras in the grill and tarot decks, because I pitched the idea to them when they auditioned. They were looking for someone, and I thought, I, I can totally see how we could do this. So we put the major arcana of the tarot in different glove compartments, and then the people in the car would pick a card, and based on what they'd pick, I would do the reading. But they couldn't see me, so I became the persona of the car. Oh, well, that's cool. It was super cool. And people, w- people actually would ask, and this was... Um, a little bit before, you know, uh, ways and all of our guidance, uh, mm-hmm. the GPSs came to be. So they would ask if I came with the car. Oh, that's so <laughs> fun. And yeah. I know part of your bio, which you sent me is grief counselor. Have you expo- mm-hmm. experienced your own grief that made you want to make a difference in that? Um, yes, of course. And unfortunately, I guess yeah. is um, within we- our... Yeah, to be here, I think. Well, and as you, I'm aging, I'm also experiencing uh, loss of greater levels as my time goes on. And, but yes, I, my father um, was a very difficult passing in them. Uh, I had a sister in law from who also passed away, and there was a bit of complications around her passing. So it's, uh, I, th- I think it enhances a medium's ability to have empathy for the person that you're sitting with. Absolutely. If you have experienced complicated grief, more or less, if you've experienced a death that is out of expected time, mm-hmm. so it's not a grandparent or a parent's crossing, it's it's really something that is an extraordinary event. And I, I think it made me that and the the grief counseling, I think, allowed me to to mature into a better medium on a level that I think it's great for mediums to mature. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. It does. Um, and you know, I, I talked to, there's many of us like-minded souls who are in some branch of this afterlife conversation and without experiencing our own grief, it, we would have never been on the journey Like you said, we wouldn't have the empathy. Uh, And I think under everything it is we're doing, it really is to not only help heal a grieving heart, but really to empower souls. And that's, that seems to be what you are about with um, everything that I've found out about you. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, because, you know, my thing is, if we don't die, who are we? And I say we're uh, souls having a human experience and really want to empower people to live the best lives possible. And that tells, you know, everything about you tells me you're up to the same game, but I have to ask you, what does, what is the soul gardener? <laughs> I have never heard that expression. Oh, I'm going to talk to a soul gardener. Well, I, created the term soul gardener because I needed to have a frame for all the other individual offerings that I have that complement the communication with the spirit world. So as a grief counselor, shaman, uh, energy medicine practitioner, um, hypnotherapist, uh, those various uh, traits, I wanted to be able to figure out how I could make it presentable as I suppose somewhat of a menu option, but to help people understand the value of living soul centered lives, which also was the impetus of writing the book. It's just this work. And Sandra, I know this is the same with you. This work changes you. It demands that you understand the gift of living, no matter the length of it. And that the power and the empowerment that comes from personal responsibility and investing in your relationships. So mediumship is absolutely a necessary conversation, but from it, 
there are so many opportunities for further personal advancement. So I would be sitting with a client and we would have a very strong family pattern show up within a mediumship sitting. And I would feel remiss and uh, that I was kind of leaving them at the curb by saying, well, good luck with that. So it it created a yearning in me to continue the conversation Mm -hmm. because it was so evident to me that the minute something within It really takes one soul to shift a pattern in a family. So if somebody comes in and they are conscious enough to transcend a dysfunction, not really keen on that word, but it's what's being used right now, a a pattern that is disempowering to the family. And if one person comes in and they can transition and transform that pattern, then the soul group doesn't need to continue that conga line. They can release that and then step into the next level of evolution that that soul group is working with. To me, that's such a delicious part of why we're here. So my work has just naturally led me to offer other opportunities for people if they choose to, to continue the conversation. Oh, that's great. That's pretty juicy. And yeah, I'm, I'm all about that soul group and getting off the conga line. (laughs) I've got, you know, I'm human, you're human. And as great as things are when we talk on these shows, you know, we all deal with our own. I mean, we're in a life with other human beings. And so there's uh, very often stuff that happens. So I really like it. Yeah. And I think I stay actively involved. Every one of these episodes is definitely to empower others to have great lives, but I'm one of those people as well. And I don't hang up from a phone call with you like we are without feeling like a million bucks myself. So Mm -hmm. um, it's important. It's important to surround yourself with uh, like-minded people and take courses. And I love that you have online courses as well as your cards and now your new book uh, really to do that. And what do I talk about? the book. And also if you could weave in somehow some, um, some of the reasons you believe in the afterlife, I know talking to many mediums, it's kind of obvious you do because of what you do, but sometimes it's a a first episode that somebody's listening to this show and and there might be a loved one that's no longer walking on earth and just looking for a little comfort that their loved ones are still around. So love to hear about the book. And then also if you could share a couple stories, what makes you believe that we don't die? Well, I'll I'll start with the We Don't Die segment just because it is so juicy and imperative. It is ingrained in some people that's a mechanism and a belief system that they just have either in the background or woven into the experience of their life. There are many people who a death is the transformer because the questions that come up when someone that we dearly are connected to dies, creates a yearning that isn't necessarily satiated by a book or by what other people are telling you as comfort because we are not good at supporting each other in grief. So the experience becomes compounded by the fact that grief for a lot of people becomes almost as devastating as the loss itself because there's a disconnect from other human beings because we are awkward when adversity happens to people. So I, for me, when my, it, I would really say my father had so much to do with deepening even my understandings because it became personal to me. And I, I was so connected with him that to not have him be connected felt almost as if there was a, almost a loss of myself in that. So in, in a, an absolute desire to reconnect with him, um, I have demanded <laughs> cause I'm his daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, I have <laughs> demanded at times and I'm glad I did, um, that he show up. I remember the morning that I found out that he had died and, um, I sat back on my bed and I congratulated him for releasing cause I knew he was very concerned about my mom. And I said, you know, I got it. Don't worry about it. And then I thought, Oh my God, I'm not a daughter anymore. 
like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a dad anymore. So, oh God. And then I thought, wait a minute, what if, what if for some crazy reason I'm wrong about all this? So I was like, okay, dad, look, I know that, that you're probably relaxing or golfing or doing something, <laughs> but, um, I need you right now you're to funny. come up with some signs or symbols for me to prove that this is true. So my husband and I were driving up to San Francisco and there was a truck in front of us. Now my father didn't, say, I love you very freely, but he would grab my hand and squeeze it three times, which meant I love you. So one, two, three is a huge sign or symbol from the spirit world always that whether initially it was my father's soul, but now it's just the I, a support, a supporting I love you from the spirit world. So one, two, three is a big one for me. So this truck kept being in front of us as we were driving to San Francisco and we were in this horrendous traffic and I was not really a hundred percent there. And I kept, I started getting frustrated at this stupid truck for being in front of us until I looked at the license plate. God love the spirit world for being patient with me. And the license plate was four, one, two, three M D R. So I looked at it and I thought, I thought, okay, well, that looks like daughter and I love you. And I was like, nope, I'm making it up. I'm making it up. That's not enough. And I'm sure my father was like, Jesus, you know, <laughs> my dad would say Jesus Christ all the time. And I'm sure my dad was thinking, oh, great. She's really putting me to work. So I said, that's not enough. I need a bigger sign. So then we're about 10 minutes later on the other side of the freeway, this Mack truck I asked for bigger. This Mack truck drives by with a sign that says, Jesus is not our, um, Jesus is our savior, not a swear word. And I started laughing so hard because I know that dad always said Jesus Christ and it was not in uh, to praise <laughs> that soul. Right. And I started laughing because it was the best sign or symbol. Plus his sense of humor was back. And so to me, it was this extraordinary new way of getting validation when I really needed help. So it was, it was the beginning of a very funny conversation with my father in the spirit world and very poignant at times too, because I realized that he would reach out to me when he missed me. It wasn't just me missing him. So I think the personal experience of missing someone has made me a better medium also because it's, I understand, I understand personally what the person might be experiencing. Right. Yeah. Well, so your dad's together with my dad looking Yes. Two girls. It's actually really oh. sweet, Sandra, because I did purposely didn't introduce myself to your story too much ahead of time. And as I was getting ready prior to our call, I could feel your dad being very proud of you. And I thought, okay, I've got to make sure I have a moment to tell her that. But oh. I could but it's I just want you to know I could feel him before our phone call, but I I always like to ask before I say something. So I agree. I think I think they're sitting there being proud. <laughs> is really nice and you know i can only imagine when it's our time to release crossover transition whatever you want to call it we're going to be like oh my gosh yeah, this is yeah. great what <laughs> can you yeah. believe those people on earth don't get it okay let's try to get through awesome exactly. come on let's do this we can do this together <laughs> what kind of sign should we give them Okay, the stop to the stoplight. Now yeah, let's, you know. <laughs> I know, I know. I, and, I'm, and I'm actually really going to be fascinated with like, how the heck does this work? And w what are these things? Because I love to work with intuitives and mediums, but also parents oftentimes whose children are in the spirit world. Because this oh, yes. availability of connecting with the spirit world, you know, is it's available to everybody. It's just maybe the mediums have gone to the gym a little bit longer <laughs> and focused on it more specifically. Specifically. But it's it's playful, it's fun, it's childlike. But in training mediums, I I try to always ask the spirit world, like, help me with how to do this, mm -hmm. because I can come up with my own ideas. But I love when the spirit world inspires exercises and such, which is part of the reason why I was happy my publishers were open minded to putting downloaded guided meditations uh, connected with the book because for the people that have read the book um either prior to publication or are just really crazy people and have read it already i was like mm -hmm. oh my god thank you um they've commented on the meditations being helpful because i think there there's so many people that have 
it's so sad. There's an aspect of us that understands the world as physical and mm -hmm. an aspect of us that understands the world as spiritual. And that dualism is where sometimes we can get confused with what the value of our soul is, because death will absolutely put what I call the finite self, the part that understands the physical world into fear and worry and our emotions get caught up. So it's very difficult to bridge to the infinite aspect of ourself, that infinite self, which is immortal. Um, so I think when there is that moment of not knowing what's going on, sometimes a guided meditation, sometimes getting help with how do I find that bridge is helpful. Oh, I like it. And I think, you know, I talk about this enough on the show, just that meditations can and meditating can be the access point to get us in touch with the eternal, the spiritual, when our normally our human mind is so busy, you know? Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah, it's great. So how, when people get your book, is there, is it like a website you go to or how, how would somebody access the uh, meditation? Well, I'm, 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 yes. What they do is, so my publisher is uh, reveal press, which is an imprint of new harbinger and the new harbingers website has a link that's within the book okay, that gotcha. you go to. And then you, I, I haven't actually tried it myself, but then you access the meditations from there. Okay. So there's moments within, and it's in every single chapter. Cause I'm a huge, because the reason why meditation is important. Um, so I kind of think the mind is this beautiful canvas mm -hmm. that should be blank at times for either that finite aspect of us to work through an emotional piece or our personality to understand something that we're experiencing within the physical world or within our relationships or the infinite aspect of us to use as a conduit for working with the spirit world and being inspired by the spirit world as all of us are when we're in our passion, when we're creative and when we're birthing something within this world. Because I honestly feel inventors and anybody that creates anything, including your book, my book, there's an, there's a co-creation that happens and that needs to be accessed from the spiritual aspect of us. So the reason why meditation is such a brilliant gateway is you're allowing the mind to be reminded that it can be influenced by a power greater than its own. Excellent. I like it. I'm just trying to digest that with the <laughs> mind or with the <laughs> Yeah, the because I think I think we can we can sometimes create a negative relationship with our mind by seeing it as like, it's like a bully or it's, it's tough on us or it's right. and like, it's against us. And I think the concept of the soul is, you know, as spiritual beings, we're connected to each other and it's a love current. We as human beings have a lovely array of emotions and we can be very dismissing of each other and disconnect from each other. And within that place, we experience loneliness and fear and guilt and so many things. So when you're having a conversation about the soul, and this has really come from my work, which is, again, why I wanted the book to be a bit of a journey. I had to start the book talking about what is the soul? And more importantly, I needed to really define my cosmology so I could understand and have terminology I could give to people to say, here's the soul has the human aspect and the spiritual aspect. So you've got to love both equally because you can't just be human and you can't just be spiritual. Right. You've got to have a lovely intersection of both aspects. And everything that we can be hard on ourselves for. So say it's the bullying mind or the I'm not good enough mind or I'm not smart uh -huh. enough mind. As you know, I, you know, I'm a human. And I don't like hearing some negative self-talk and you know, uh -huh. we can put a stop to it. But also it's some of those things that's made me who I am today. It's made me Absolutely. independent. It's made me unstoppable. Uh, it's <laughs> made me be extremely caring and compassionate and generous with others mm. and, yeah. and all that. So, um, yeah, we got to be gentle on ourselves. I think a little well, bit. Well, and it, and it's the beautiful blend between the two of them because the finite self will always speak. It, that's where the I'm nots come from. Mm -hmm. 
because the reality of the infinite self is I am because it understands its connection to everything. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have the I'm not, we don't have the opportunity to step into where we are resisting the infinite and unconditional love that is the truth of us because the human experience has introduced what feels like limitation and that's part of the evolution of our soul. So there is an Achilles heel that most of us have that's either I'm not enough or I'm not lovable or I can't. And in those three kind of scenarios, most of our homework comes. So then if you can take on that aspect that you're here to evolve and that everything that happens from the infinite self's perspective is a gift, so it's not happening to you, it's happening for you, then life becomes this playground and this teaching experience where every single person that you encounter, no matter how random, you can look at as heaven sent and assisting you in your personal evolution or allowing you to be completely of service to another human being. And if that component could shift a little bit within our world, I think our personal responsibility would be different. And I just think we'd be more kind. Yes. You know, it's really interesting, Austin. And I'm going to talk to the person we can't see right now who's listening. There's something about listening to Austin right now that there is just wisdom in her words that I don't even know if she gets like you're Austin you're yes it's you speaking but it's like I can hear such divine wisdom that's like whether it's your dad or beings with you but it's just it it just feels and sounds right and true and there's like this undercurrent of truth that's going through your words it's really hard for me to put my finger on and explain it well but like, I just want to, you to keep talking. This is what, <laughs> how I feel right now. But really, it, it is. I mean, and we, we want to empower, and even all of us, to be really empowered to live this great life and to acknowledge those things about ourselves are so important. I think, it, well, first of all, thank you. That was incredibly kind and eloquent. <clears throat> I... In, in my sittings, and I'm sure you have the same experience, I am so incredibly aware of how lovable people are. Yes. When you do, when you do one-on-one sittings and you, and I, my, I'm a little bit of a goofy medium and I'm, and I'm proud of me <laughs> because uh, there are mediums that are brilliant at doing like half hour sessions and I love them for it. Like I, I admire them. I think that's amazing. I cannot do that if you paid me. I love our sessions and a little more than that uh-huh. because I really want a soul conversation. I really want the spirit world to have the opportunity to bless the person, to honor the person I'm sitting with. And within that, there are so many ways that the spirit world and it's, and it's, it's, Oftentimes, before there is a soul contact with the spirit world, I will sometimes get a download just from the universe to celebrate the soul that I'm sitting across. And it's made me realize we are all lacking in acknowledgement. We're all lacking in feeling that we have done something helpful or healing. And many of our acts upon this earth are invisible, but incredibly visible to the spirit world. So you, as a medium, understand that there are times within a mediumship sitting where the words that come through either from the soul I'm speaking with, or there's a shift where there's a higher intelligence that blesses the room in addendum to the person that I'm talking to, where what is coming through is fluid and flowing and beyond my own thinking. It's like when you're at the supermarket and somebody's standing behind you and you get this inkling to say something or to compliment them, and you can tell it has a deep meaning to the person that you're talking to, whereas it doesn't feel like it's that big of a deal to you, but at least you've trusted your instincts enough to follow it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly where the spirit world works with us. So by allowing a more spiritual perspective, 
and allowing our souls to be constantly with one foot in the physical world and one foot in the spiritual world, I think we can be available to the spirit world. And wouldn't that be wonderful if there was just this company of angels that surround each one of us? And when it gets me really choked up, Mm. uh, when we need love, that they're just waiting for someone to be uh, to have their mind be blank enough that they can pour in a meaning, a message, a love, a something, so that person won't feel alone. That's beautiful. And that, in those words, tells me it's not just about meditation. It's about being in the present moment in our lives, oh. isn't it? It's, it's just about being the best version of ourselves. And we're going to fumble. We're supposed to. We're be- it, you know what? You learn more by fumbling than you do by being all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> so I'm, it's really funny because actually my dad gave me at one point when I fumbled pretty badly physically, um, he gave me a rabbit and he called it fumble. And it's really funny. I, <laughs> I appreciate that rabbit a great deal because it celebrates my humanity when I'm not always in my celebration mode yet. But I, I just think there's there's so much hope in the world. There's so much beauty in souls. There's so much available love that it's easy to focus on the times when that isn't happening. And I think it's almost the responsibility of us as individuals to notice when we become disenchanted with the world, that we really need to be equally engendering and nurturing our spiritual selves. And again, that's, that's why I wanted to write the book. I wanted to write the book because I want I thought, gosh, if somebody, if this helps somebody just know that they're not alone and that there is a pathway that they can follow when maybe they don't feel like they have a support team that might help them get back to the place where they realize that they're magical and that they're here to gift this world with something extraordinary, then, then I think I'll feel like it's helped. You're magical and you're here to gift the world with something extraordinary. I think that's what you said, something like that. That's brilliant. Mm. And that's who we each are and we're all different and it's a good thing. We don't need to compare ourselves to others. Austin, I want to ask you just because in your Mm. subtitle, a medium reveals how to cultivate your intuition, heal your heart and connect with the divine. Can you talk a little bit about those three things? Because, you know, hopefully everybody gets your book, but there might be something that you can give to leave us with today um, on those things. Like how would we begin to cultivate our intuition. It's all about developing a relationship with your spiritual self, with that infinite self. So the, the, how to cultivate your intuition is understanding that there is a collection of souls that support your individual soul. It's very easy for us to assume that that's just our ancestors because we're kind of, we will translate our physical experience to what we think the spirit world is, but it's grander than that. It's much grander. So cultivating your intuition is stepping into the trust that you may not be the only thinker and the only person invested in your becoming. Wow. Let's just take a moment. (laughs) That's a sweet thing. That's a wow statement. Coming from a person who feels very alone most of the time and has to remind myself that I've got a spirit team and all that, that that is amazing. Well, look at the, look at the expansion and the, the availability of mediumship. Now I had to ask myself, like, why is mediumship happening? And the answer I got from the spirit world is because you don't remember your divine. Right. And instead of celebrating what's happening, you're worrying too much. You're, you're in the future of your lives or in the past and not celebrating what's happening. And it's true. We, I don't know if we can grab that. So the cultivating your intuition, and there's 
lots of ways to do it because I studied energy medicine and I studied past life regression. So there's a, there's a myriad of things that I present during the book. So every single chapter ends with homework because I'm a big homework giver. So there's <laughs> what I call divine spark exercises. So you get to practice being a spark of the divine and, and work with how do you physically feel energy? How can you play psychic games? How can you work on all of your soul senses or the ability that your soul has to perceive the energy around you? And they're, I think they're fun. Plus introspective exercises where you're journaling and really asking yourself deeper questions. Like I've told you what I think the soul is. What do you think it is? And I want people to have different opinions because we can't, I don't want people to be the same. We're here to be authentic. We're here to be a personal distillation of God. So if that's the case, we shouldn't ever copy each other. We should learn from each other and we should celebrate other people's success. But I don't want it to look the same. I want people to take a time out, be with yourself and figure out what you want to gift this world with. Um, then the heal your heart section has a lot to do with my publishers wanted me to honor my grief counseling. And although they wanted me to talk about my own observations, I feel like that conversation's been in other books by mediums. So I wanted to figure out how could I expand this conversation of grief. So there's sections in the book and one chapter in particular that I gifted to three very wonderful and brave mm -hmm clients of mine, women who have sons in the spirit world, and each son passed from a different cause. And they talk about their experience, they talk about the journey personally and communally. And I also ask them, I ask them just a lot of questions. And then I ask them, can you teach us how to do this better? Can you teach us how to help people when they're in grief? Because in doing that, I think we're learning about grieving by finding out. So they were very bold and very brave and said, do this and don't do this. And a lot of it was just embracing, I don't know what to say. So in that moment, instead of not asking, not remembering and disconnecting to just say, I'm not sure what you need, teach me. Hmm. And the, I, I, I am so grateful for them. And then the connecting with the divine aspect of the book is the meditations, the remembrance of your, the eternity of your soul. And if you've been eternal, let's go into your past lives. Let's, let's find out why these patterns show up. Let's go into the future. Let's see what, what potential you could pick up about the future, because if everything's energy, then everything's accessible. So to me, it's, it's kind of like my love letter to all the realizations and the opportunity the spirit world has given me to do this work is they've made me feel so possible. And we focus on impossible or probable, and those are so defined and restrictive. Right. So I want to get people into possible. Even the word impossible has in it, I'm possible. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. And you and I but, have witnessed a lot of impossible things become possible. So yeah. I think it's important to know that the sky's the limit. I mean, no one yeah. can say you can't do or this mm -mm. can't be because mm -mm. we've witnessed. Well, miracles. you can. Yeah. yeah, you you can say that you can you and, and it's funny, because sometimes people's first response to something that they don't understand will be that's impossible, right? But it's because it's that finite self going, nope, that doesn't make any sense to me. That's not physically possible. And it, it's that part has to be somewhat skeptical or try to create rational, rational thinking and understanding of what we experience. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to understand the physical world. But we are so much more than what we know. I'm sitting here with a smile on my face right now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, we really are. And it's just, yeah. I, so I'm going to get your book number one, but like, I Aww. really want to <laughs> listen to one of the meditations right away. So I'm going to figure that out because it is true. It's, it, it is great to take the time and just concentrate on your breath and, and get to that stillness. But there's also times, and you said it perfectly, however you said it, that you just want somebody to lead you on the journey. And yeah. it's so comforting. And you've got a great voice yourself. And there really is so much love and wisdom in your speaking. 
Mm. And that you care. And so although many people may never meet you, I mean, you can just feel how much you care about them. Oh, I do. I really, I'm a huge cheerleader for humanity. I believe in the goodness of people. And I think the only reason why we experience contrast is because it informs us. Mm -hmm. It's either the individual is teaching us by doing something that really stirs the pot, which we absolutely need at times because we fall asleep quite frequently, or they have forgotten. Yeah. And the beautiful thing I, I pull in a lot when I'm doing meditations is I always ask the spirit world, what, ha what do you know about me? I've forgotten. Like if you're showing up, there's a reason for it, mm. whether it's souls in the spirit world connecting to an individual, which oftentimes is that message aspect that we get into when we're uh, in that aspect of the reading is what, what are they, what are they witnessing that we are doing that we need to be reminded of that, that they can see. And then just the fact that I don't believe that we would distill into this physical reality if there wasn't the potential that we could evolve things, right? whether it's personal or communal or globally, each one of our souls has so much to offer. We just need to be reminded of that sometimes. And then the courage piece is having the discipline and the forbearance and the surrender to be willing to step into whatever that is and accept whatever comes with it, because not all human beings are going to be embracing of the brave. That's very true. Uh, mm -hmm. That word surrender is a tough thing to do, but <laughs> if we can surrender to the unknown and if it feels right and it has integrity and, you know, just go for it. I, I would never, Austin, I would have never thought that in my life, some of the worst things that has that have happened to me have turned out to be the best things. And so while we're in deep grief or we're in deep pain, or if there's some kind of an argument or something that you're in, um, yeah, gosh, we can be it like, making it wrong or making the other person wrong. Or like you said earlier, you know, that that person is a gift to me and the situation is a gift to me. Yeah. And you just, gosh, you just never know how it you can use it in the future. Well, it, it also helps me a tremendous amount to try to keep it as simple as possible. Okay. And I think we're either connecting or we're disconnecting. So the finite self is very comfortable disconnecting because it sees everything as physical. So if you look around the physical space you're in, it looks like there's a series of objects that are touching each other, but disconnected from each other. On the spiritual aspect, everything's connected. So it really is that beautiful dualism that we have within ourselves that comprise the soul in physical form that demand that we when our finite self is being triggered by a situation, and there's one chapter in the book that I had to include, which was soul-centered relationships, because as you know, in our mediumship sittings, really what we're doing a lot of our noticings is the functionality or the dysfunction of relationships and the success of relationships or the, the lack of ability for two people to communicate with each other. So you know, it's all well and good to find out what the soul is and then to talk to all these really lovely supporters. But if you don't bring those concepts down to earth mm -hmm. and incorporate them within your life, you're not getting the point of living a soul centered life. Living a soul centered life demands that when you are absolutely triggered and when you are disconnecting, pissed off and absolutely want to run out of the room shifting to that part of you that understands that that person's teaching you something or they are so stuck in their own beliefs that they don't believe that they're lovable and they are forcing their agenda on you. So it's their stuff, not your stuff mm -hmm. that it's d d just necessary to be in that place of saying, what do I need to take ownership for here? How can I stay connected to this individual and how can I shift to a loving perspective so I can get the nourishment from what this moment is offering so I can 
digest this piece and move on. Because <laughs> the moving on part is really where that's the reason why you want to leave the room. So I think if we could spiritually move on too, it'd be helpful. Gosh. And if we could just have a little bit more practice, just injecting love into the situation for the yeah. other person, for ourselves. Because mm -hmm. love feels good, but that finite self uh, doesn't always want to do that. No. Austin, we don't have too much time left, but I do want to just touch on some of the things that you have on your website besides the book. Can you talk a little bit about the cards and also about your online courses and also how people can reach you? Because you're somebody I want to keep in touch with. <laughs> oh, thank you. So my website is Austin Wells, and that's A-U-S-T-Y-N-W-E-L-L-S. I am a love of sharing information. So I have lots of cl online classes and I've really put them online because I realized that the book begins a conversation that I want to continue. Right. So I work with intuitives and developing mediums and I like to keep the group small because I, I feel that there's training that's going on, but a lot of the practice of it isn't necessarily happening. So I have mediumship practicums that allow mediums to practice. Um, That's and then great. I have, yeah, cause it's, it just was the one thing that was evident to me that was necessary. Um, I created two decks of cards. One is a divine spark deck, which is for anyone to work with their intuition. These cards are, uh, picture cards, but also they're color cards, so your finite self will want to define what the card is, but the, but the challenge and the gift of the deck is to allow your infinite self to not know and to put cards together and tell a story. And when one of the color cards comes up with, well, it's like just the color pink mm -hmm. or just the color Brown, I find that people's readings are fascinating to me. You can pull them as daily Oracle cards in a sense to just get a different take on your day, but to allow the cards to always inform you in the moment and not be just defined as well this one showed up before and this is what it meant the last time so it's a practice piece then I developed the divine spark cards and all I'm very blessed because all of my products are at the Arthur Finley College which I'm I owe to medium Chris Drew who I adore fantastic um, yes so the divine spark cards are mediumship development cards initially that's how they started they are car. They are uh, individual subjects that I found were categories of evidence that mediums would bring through in classes that I would teach. So they can help people deepen their mediumship. But then I found grief counselors like to use them to help their clients talk about their loved ones in the spirit world. And then families use them sometimes for holidays to pass around the table, so everybody gets to remember. Like you could remember things about your dad and pass out cards and everybody gets to talk about that card and how it relates to that soul in the spirit world. So it's a way to remember those souls. And then to match the, uh, the book and the cultivating intuition, heal your heart and connect with the divine. I have three tracks on my website of classes that I offer, whether it's spiritual grief support and groups or more meditations and going deeper into especially one meditation in the book, which is about meeting your round table guides and then just playing as a group. Because I find when people meditate together, they become much more capable of accessing places that individually they might not be able to do. Wow. Busy girl who's really <laughs> impacting a lot of people in so many ways. Thank you. And you you do speaking. I know you'll be in June at the Afterlife Conference, right? In Salt Lake? Yes, in Salt Lake City. And I'm traveling quite a bit this year. And then on top of that, I also work, I do mediumship and my soul gardening and then energy medicine and mentorship too. So I, again, that's, that's why the soul gardening was helpful because it it helped me put an umbrella on a bunch of different things that seem disconnected that I went, Nope, they can connect just fine. And as a gardener, you can help pick the weeds out of people. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Oh, I'm just going to pick the weeds, which yeah. is good. Yes. Which you understand the metaphor quite you, you well. You know, you know, I think about 
Well, I live with my aunt and God bless her. She's got a green thumb and she can have our house and outside look beautiful. But there's a difference between a professionally landscaped garden (laughs) and just what auntie and I can do around the house, you know? So I really get the soul gardener and just having a coach, having a mentor in whatever your passion is. I mean, it really can take you to just a whole new world and a whole new beauty for sticking with the gardening. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's also why people come to us because they come because they can't connect for some reason with that infinite aspect of themselves. Right. So mediums or any holistic practitioner or energy practitioner where we are at our best is when our practice in accessing our infinite self is so readily accessible that no matter what the noise is within our world, we can disconnect from our own needs and be there to be completely of service to another individual. And that's where that that's where the hope is of practitioners. And I think from looking at these amazing people you've had on your show, you are fantastically discerning as far as who you choose. So your listeners are so darn lucky because there's a multitude of integral and loving practitioners that they can choose because they should find someone who authentically speaks to their soul. Oh, thanks for that. And also, You know, I've been on my journey too. some episodes better than others, but I feel like with everybody, you know, there's gold in their words. So Mm. some things might resonate, some things might not, but take that which does and use it to empower you for your life. Austin, any closing words before I wrap up the show? Thank you so much for having me be part of this conversation. And thank you for being such a supportive and loving hostess because you absolutely make your guest feel important and supported. Oh, it's because you are and you're loved and you're beautiful and you're fun. And thank um, you. I, I love new friends. So yay, it's easy. Me that's, too. Just, that's just all part of being Sandra and <laughs> Austin, Austin and our guest. I realized, you know, when I do all these shows last year, I was promoting the afterlife symposium that I was going to speak at, which I did. But now for 2019, yes, certainly I've got we don't die Boston.com, we don't die Orlando.com, but I do want to share some other people doing some great things. So Terry Daniels puts on the Afterlife Conference, which Austin will be speaking at June 6th through 9th in Salt Lake City. That website is afterlifeconference.com. For those who attended the Afterlife Symposium last year and the year before in Scottsdale, Arizona, it's not going to be the Afterlife Symposium, but um, my fellow AREI members, Suzanne Wilson and Kathleen Malone are going to put on what's called a Soul Summit Scottsdale. So it'll be less speakers, but on the same topic of afterlife and empowering your soul. So um, I don't know the website right off the top of my head, but if you just Google Soul Summit Scottsdale, you'll see that September 12th through 15th. And certainly, listeners, if you know of other good things I need to recommend, I certainly will do that. But I love doing these shows. I love talking to great people. And selfishly, yeah, this empowers me to continue living a good life. I have bad days too, Austin, but there's no way I can get on an interview with you like this and hang up with you and think, woe is me. You know, (laughs) it's just impossible. Uh, So uh, for our listener too, I thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time, whether this is your first episode or your 292nd episode. We don't die radio. All episodes are available at wedontdieradio.com and you can find them on YouTube and iTunes. And just a reminder, if you don't know this and you are a Facebook user, there's a Facebook group. Just simply type in We Don't Die Listeners and then we'll accept you into the group. But it's over 4,000 like-minded souls all talking about this, supporting each other through grief 
and so much more. So I want to just close this show and just say thanks again to our special guest, Austin. And you can visit austinwells.com and be sure to do what I'm going to do is purchase a copy of Soul Conversations, her book available on Amazon. And actually right in the description of this episode, I have a link to that because I'm, I'm really inspired also by the, these meditations. So I like Austin and I I really want to support you. So thanks for that. And in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain. And always so delighted that I get to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. I do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important. You are one of a kind. And like Austin said, sometimes we just don't remember that we're divine, but we are. So thank you for listening and we'll see you soon.